to dig deeper into this issue, I'm joined by analyst Otto Dichtel from Knight Libertas UK. He was formerly senior credit analyst at BNP Paribas. Uh, Otto, which of the banks we're talking about here who face the biggest problem? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Yeah. Um, well, the biggest problems seem to be uh, mostly with German and French banks. Uh, Deutsche Pfandbrief Bank has, uh, as far as I know, the largest single exposure. Commerzbank is large. Uh, Dexia uh, and uh, Sokgen, uh, Credit Agricole, but also uh, BCP in Portugal has a subsidiary in Greece, so relatively also a large exposure there. So you mentioned some of these banks in Germany which are not publicly listed, that many of them are state banks effectively. It could mean that Germany has to lend even more money to Greece than they thought. Well, if you take the example of Deutsche Pfandbrief Bank, yes, it is 100% owned by the German government. It's effectively been bailed out. Uh, in, in the uh, credit crisis already, so uh, write downs of Greek debt would basically lead to, to further capital needs of that bank, so uh, would end up uh, as a bill for the German government anyway. So then will a Greek aid package prevent the, the spillover of, of sovereign risk into the banking system? Well, hopefully it will. <laughs> uh, I think if, if it uh, is not designed uh, to prevent that spillover, then I think we're, we're probably in credit crisis uh, point two or maybe it's point three by this time. And what would that mean? Well, I think uh, the, the core problem here is that uh, the, uh, Greece has, in itself has no uh, ability to access liquidity, basically, and the market is speculating uh, against that ability at the moment. And if uh, the other European countries aren't supporting Greece, then the market could go on speculating against uh, one country after the next that is within the eurozone. Uh, but these are the bondholders we're talking about. These banks they could be facing what they're calling a haircut. Mm -hmm. What sort of haircut do you expect, or do you expect one at all? Well, a haircut, I think, would be problematic and effectively is the default or the effect of it the is, default. De facto, yeah. So uh, uh, it's just a nicer way of putting it though, isn't it? Well, it's, yeah, I guess it's a word that sounds a bit different, <laughs> but uh, it's what it is. Uh, and um, I think it would have very severe effects ac across the board because it would lead to losses at the banks and yeah, and, and then it, it, it cascades into other countries and becomes really a problem that it spirals out of control. But we've already seen evidence of that, haven't we? We've, uh, we've had credit downgrades for Portugal and Spain now mm -hmm. as well. I mean, has, is there any way of containing this now? Well, I think this is the beginning of this contagion effect that is so uh, potentially damaging in this whole uh, Greek crisis. And uh, Go on. yeah, uh, Barclays, I was just going to ask you about Barclays because they're. Uh, um, how UK banks and their exposure to the Greek uh, crisis, how extensive is that? Um, well, it's the numbers I've seen so far suggest uh, UK banks have relatively small exposures, really. So I don't think it would be a major problem for the UK banks. A lot of these losses are going to be safeguarded, though, with banks taking out hedging positions. So perhaps people are over-egging it, wouldn't you say? Um, well, certainly some of the headline numbers will, will be a little larger than, than the actual economic exposures are, yes. And again, I mean, let's be very clear about this. Uh, a, a Greek default or restructuring of Greek debt in itself, I don't think would really uh, threaten the European banking system as a whole. But I believe the, the, the knock-on effect and the contagion effect that this could have is the real risk here. Otto, we've never been, this is uncharted territory. What is your gut feeling? What is the end game? Well, I think we've kind of been here, actually. I mean, maybe not with a European sovereign, but if you think back in the credit crisis, uh, Lehman, you know, and it had the knock-on effects on other, uh, other investment banks. Merrill was in, in difficulty, AIG then. And it required basically a very large uh, uh, liquidity support package from the U.S. Fed and, and the, the U.S. government. But do, does the Eurozone and the ECB, etc., do they have the stomach for it? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> um, it, well, it, it seems like uh, the, uh, the seriousness of the problem is, is, is very well understood uh, by, I think, most politicians now and, and by the, the policymakers on, on uh, the European level. So, I mean, all the indications that we have and all the, all the stories that are coming out suggest that uh, a package is being uh, put together and, and the deal is being done soon. Otto Dichter, thanks so much for joining us. We do appreciate it.